Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to be painting an orange um, flower. It's a little bit different flower than what I've painted in the past. New to painting it, so hopefully it'll turn out all right. Keep my fingers crossed. I'm going to be using a number 12 flat brush, a number 8 round brush by Princeton, a number six round brush. It's actually a liner brush, I guess, but it's by Princeton. And a number four round brush, along with a quarter inch scruffy. And I think that's it. Paint I'm using is Happy Green, Pure Orange, Autumn Leaves, Magenta, Sunflower, and Wicker White. I think I've got it all covered. Now, on part of the flower that I'm going to be painting, I'm going to be using a mixture of some pure orange and white to make a color, more of a custom color. So the colors that I'm using, you know, you can vary them and use something something else instead if you choose to do so. I'm going to go ahead and start with the number 8 round brush and I will be beginning with the autumn leaves to begin. So I'm going to tap some more out here. Just a moment. Alright, so I'm going to try to do more of just a spray on the front here of this truffle bowl. Uh, this type of a bowl can be good for not only handling or holding layered desserts, layered salads, it can even be a nice uh, piece to have on your table as a centerpiece. All you have to do is place some water in it along with cut flowers and floating candles and you have a beautiful centerpiece. Okay, so on this one, I'm just beginning with the autumn leaves, not mixing it with any other color, and I'm doing my, my marks. I'm trying to do my guidelines. For some reason, I have an issue with making these type of flowers. I never really like how they turn out. When I'm trying to do like a daisy type of flower, although this is not a daisy, I'm not really sure what kind of flower this is. Could just be, I mean, it's. I'm, I'm going from a picture that I've seen, but I didn't really know what type of flower it was or is. But I'm going in between here with this autumn leaves, I'm trying to leave a space open in the center if possible. And we'll see if I can keep it. A little bit of a glop right there, and I'm going to turn it, add some more to it. Then I'm going to do another, probably a smaller version of it over here to the side. Anyone who follows my videos knows that I like to work in threes, so that's the reason why. I typically do that. Now, what I'm doing today, I'm just going to be showing you one style of flower. Most of my paintings are this way. Occasionally I'll throw some extras in, but I don't want to get too crazy with them. I'm doing these mainly for beginning painters, so I'm hoping that by not throwing too many different flowers into it, you can follow it better. We'll see. If that doesn't help, please let me know down in the, the comments. I would appreciate it. Alright, so I'm just kind of staggering these a little bit. Then I'm going to throw even a smaller one off to the side here. Now I could switch to my smaller brush, but I'm not going to at this point, but I will here in a minute. And you'll see why. 
And it's funny how this paint without any other additives covers so well. And then you have some that just don't have that much pigment in them and they don't cover very well at all as a single color. This part of painting this flower is not so difficult, but when I go to try to get the look that I'm going to continue to paint here in a minute, I don't know, for some reason it just doesn't come out exactly the way I want it to, but we'll see, and maybe you can do better at it. Alright, so on the next one, the next level, I'm going to switch over to my number six guess liner brush. To me it's more looks like more like a round brush, but it's a liner apparently. And then I'm going to do another layer on here and I'm just going to go in, still try to follow the path that I started. I guess I should have come down here a little bit just to put in some more color here. And I just like I want you to be able to see the different layers. That's why I chose to do it with a different color. You know, if you can get the color even closer, I really didn't put a lot of you know try into getting the color to be closer. I'm fine with this. But I'm trying to stay within the actual original petals that I painted. Like I said, you could stagger them more if you wanted. But I'm choosing it. I'm doing it exactly the way I wanted to. If you find a different way that works better for you, by all means, try it. Love to see it. Share it. I think it's fun when we, as creators, share our work. Very nice. And see here I'm going into my center. Like I told you, I don't know how how well I'll stay within or stay out of that area, but it's okay. I can still tap in the center either way. And we're going over here. Again, I could switch over to the smaller brush. I'm just not not doing it yet. Primarily because I'll be using a different color on my smaller brushes and I don't want to have to rinse them out in between. Hope that makes sense. Now, like I said, I could keep working this one. I think I might add another pull right here. Um, maybe even another pull right in here. It's fine. Don't want to do too much because I really don't intend to. Um, worry too much about the, the centers and such because I'll be adding more to them. Alright, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and tap in the centers. I'm going to try it this way. I did a little bit differently on my sample because I still have more to paint here, but I'm going to go ahead and tap it in. And it's okay if I'm pulling up any of the colors below. If you don't like doing that, then make sure that you give it some dry time before you tap it in. That will help. And when you're using this, I know that we have a smaller flower here. We just have to just go a little bit lighter with it because I don't have a smaller scruffy really to use right now. And if you don't like to have any of the color from underneath pull through, which I think it did pretty good actually, uh, so give it some dry time, hit it with a hair dryer, a heat gun, anything that you have like that. I'm just going to tap this one in since it's small. Just be careful not to make it too big because I do have some other stuff to add to this. Okay, add some more yellow. I mean, you don't have to stop with the green. 
you could put white in here. I'm going to go ahead now and start my ad addition to the, the center flowers and I'm just going to easily take my smaller round brush which is the number four and just make these little just little slashes or holes with it towards the center and easy peasy I hope you like this video if you're new to my channel please make sure that you take a moment to subscribe I would appreciate it all you have to do is to hit that subscribe button that you see there'll be a notification bell that pops up Make sure you hit that as well, because that will give you notifications whenever I post something new. And I'm trying this year to post a lot of videos, I'm trying to build my channel, so any help you can give me would be appreciated. Definitely. And you can do this part of it, part of this painting, um, you know, if you want to do it in dots even, you could do it. I think. Either either way would be awesome. I just chose to use the, the little brush to tap them in. And now I am pulling up a little bit of the orange, but that's okay. And then we're going to finish off with this one. And you can, you know, go around it. I'm just trying to stagger it a little bit so that it's not really a distinct all the way around dot 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 kind of deal. It's more random. And I do still need to add another color in. Alright. And then the next color, got so many not in my sample I kept forgetting and tapping it into the wrong thing. But this is a mixture of the magenta and the wicker white. And I'm going to go around and do the same thing, just tapping in. All right, everybody, I had a, had an issue where my memory card ran out of memory, so I had to get that taken care of. So I apologize if we're going to be missing any of the what I had gone on and said and done, but I think I was pretty close to where I'm at now. I did actually get all the tapping of the centers in, so that's good. My next thing is going to be to add the greenery. I am using Thicket Happy Green and then tapping the Happy Green side into some Wicker White periodically. I am going to start by basically putting my little V and then I want to make this kind of a, I don't want it to be a real wiggly flower, I want it to be more of a jagged edged flower, or I'm sorry, leaf get these confused all the time. So I'm just kind of wiggling it in and out and then bringing it down. And then I'll make sure that's... Then I'll bring the stem down into the leaf. Alright, so I'm going to come back up here. Now you can do the V every time if you don't want to, that's fine. But I'm just going to be doing jagged edges. And you just kind of have to play with this because it's really not a standard. I'm going to, you know, be wiggling and um, back and forth and such this way and that way. So you just kind of have to play with it. It's more of a random, a random design, and not a. Where you bring your brush, but you're you're pretty much you're just kind of wiggling it, standing it up, bring it down, and then going back into the next stroke. But I just want, I don't want it to be a straight. I don't want it to be the rounded edges. I want it to be more of a jagged, edged leaf. If that makes sense, hopefully you understand. And I'll come over here and pull some down. And not to say that you couldn't mix it up with different styles of leaves, because you surely could. I'm just, on this one for the purpose of the video, just doing this style and maybe just a single one-stroke filler 
filler leaves in. Eventually when I have a little bit more time to play with it, I'm going to show you how to do to get some more movement into your designs, meaning look like they're more natural. It's not going to be like it's more of a natural looking flower. It's all going to be, it's still going to be painted and in this style, not a realistic flower per se, but you can uh, give it some sense of movement. I've done this on some of them and it's just amazing how much it looks like it's just kind of flowing in the wind and the petals are not straight on each side. You know, they're not like these are kind of just straight that none of it's flipping up and down and all around kind of deal. I know it probably doesn't make sense to you what I'm saying. I'm sorry. All right, let me clean this brush off just a smidge. Got too much on it. Now never feel bad about brushing off some, or scraping off, or brushing off some of your paint. I don't like to have a lot of paint on my brush. I mean, I like to have it enough where my design flows properly, but not too much. Where some people just they really get into having a lot of a lot of paint on their brush. All right, so we'll just keep. I'm just going to keep going around this flower and putting these kind of leaves in it. And really what the shape of this item that I'm painting on is more for a display that kind of goes left and right as opposed to up and down where some flowers, that's how they grow, is up and down. So it's kind of hard. You just kind of have to make it, make it work. Be more of a genetic design. Not realistic. And with this, you don't have to be too worried about, you don't have to be worried about it at all, about the top, how far up or down you go, because you're not drinking from it, so it doesn't matter. When you're painting a wine glass, you really should you know, start like maybe half an inch or so below the lip, so that you don't have a risk of lips coming into contact with the paint. Even though the paint is virtually, I mean, it's non-toxic, it's, if there's a crack in the paint, that's when bacteria can get into it, and that's what causes the issues. It's, it's not so much the paint itself, it's the bacteria that can come in and harm somebody if they do that. Alright, so then what I'm going to do, got a lot of these leaves, and again, I'm a leaf person. If you're not, cut it down. Don't have as many as I do. That's perfectly fine. I am going to try to clean this brush off a little bit more, and then I'm going to just go through and fill in with what I feel like these are kind of filler leaves. And you know, just the basic small little one strokey kind of leaves. I know that's not a proper term, so I apologize, but that's my term for them. And if you like that term, feel free to use it. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. You see where these just add a little bit more to it. You know, again, filler leaves are just, they're awesome. That's the purpose of them is to fill in your design, make it fuller looking. But they are optional. I'm the crazy leaf lady. Now if you feel like you want to bake this item, feel free to do so. Just make sure that your painted area is not touching anything. 
that you keep the painted area up, you know, whether you turn this, this piece upside down or on the stand itself that it's on, you can do it either way. It's perfectly fine. All right, and there we go. Very pretty, very easy. And I hope you like it. Gotta have a lot of leaves on here. Definitely don't have to do what I do with the leaves. All right, if you like this video, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell that pops up. When the video is finished, if you would hit that share button that's below the video, share this with all your friends and family, I would appreciate it. Alright, thanks again for stopping by, and until the next time, you have a good one. Mm -hmm.